Well, monkeypox cases are on the rise with over 3,000 cases confirmed in the U.S. Regulators here and in Europe bolstering their response. Joining us with more is Yahoo Finance's Anjali Kamlani. And Anjali, you know, it's been troubling to see those numbers tick up in the U.S. Already has one of the highest case counts in the world. Um, what's your reader? What are you hearing in terms of how far, you know, scientists, doctors are in terms of trying to control this? Well, experts do believe that we still have a chance to really control the spread. Right now, we're looking at a spread in all but four states in the country. And we just saw the first case of a pregnant woman uh, being infected, as well as there, the cases are now showing up in jails. So we're really seeing this concerning spread uh, of this new disease. And that is you know, prompting a lot of discussion, especially at the federal government level, of what the correct sized response is. Internal estimates uh, of the Biden administration, according to the Washington Post, could be $7 billion needed in order to mount a full attack against this. This is why, you know, the World Health Organization really looking at that public health emergency. Meanwhile, over here, we're not quite at that level yet, but we are seeing, you know, some states really pick up in what they're doing. The U.S. now leading with cases. Globally, we've seen, you know, concerns about how it's spreading, why it's spreading. And what hasn't really been, I think, enforced enough is really who's at risk because so far we've seen that it's sort of the discussion has remained on how to discuss who is at risk and it is still remaining men who have sex with men but we've of course like i said that pregnant woman getting uh, infected you know so it, it is it, you are able to get it with close contact with an individual not necessarily just through sex so it's, it's a lot of discussion still happening about how to really make sure that the american public is aware and, and remain safe yeah i mean the key here being you know getting the messaging out in front before it spreads even further um, you talked about the world health organization's declaration of public health emergency what exactly are the implications? So the implications there are really ensuring that the emergency response, kind of like what we saw with COVID, right, is really put into effect. Now, Europe has done a really good job of now following suit. They're making sure that the vaccine doses are available across uh, the countries, as well as ensuring that all public health measures are really being put in place. And what do those public health measures look like in terms of making sure people are safe, ma making sure that people are contact tracing or testing, and testing is available. Now, we do know that the CDC did and the FDA um, have expanded uh, the manufacturing of the vaccine. We know that they've expanded testing as well to include the private sector. So all of that put together is really where we stand right now in that. But, uh, you know, in terms of declaring a public health emergency here in the country, as well as looking at broad based at the, uh, you know, at, at a response, that's still in the works right now. So we're sort of, it's really prompting some critics to say that we're lagging once again in a response to well, an outbreak. That begs the question, what are they waiting for? I, I wish I knew the answer to that question. Yeah. <laughs> um, really quickly, it's, it's always worth reminding, I think viewers who are still trying to get read up on this, what specifically, or what are the steps that can be done? What precautions should people be taking? Still the same stuff that kind of applies to COVID too, which is, you know, the, the point to be made, of course, is also that we now have two outbreaks that the country is now focusing on. And they do have some similarities in terms of the symptoms that show up and, and uh, you know, what to fo how to avoid really close contact with people. Make sure that you are, you know, practicing safe distancing measures. Masking is still a very useful tactic as well. We know that there isn't, as much known about respiratory, uh, you know, droplets or, or that kind of transmission, but exposure to respiratory secretions like mucus saliva, that's another thing to look out for. So all of this is still, you know, a learning process for everyone. We know that it is, has been an endemic disease in parts of the world, but we're just seeing it for the first time spread this much across the country. So that's where, you know, the focus is right now. Yeah, troubling developments, certainly. Uh, Anjali Kamlani, appreciate you staying on top of that.